Amen. Um, I want to I want to read out of I want everybody to turn to Revelation chapter two, and we're going to start in verse eighteen. Revelation chapter two, verse eighteen, and we're going to enter into a couple weeks talking about don't eat at Jezebel's table. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write down or put in your phone or, or lock it in your memory. Do not eat at Jezebel's table. I would like to say it like this without putting any, any judgment. I would like to say this and maybe just retitle what I just told you to write down, but maybe you retitle it, stop eating at Jezebel's table. Stop eating at Jezebel's table. The return of Christ is coming very quickly. The world itself is being shaped and formed for the return of Christ, not shaped and formed for the Antichrist rule and reign. As believers, we cannot give the enemy more credit or more homage than he is due. He is due the, the, the blood of the cross. Can I get an amen? Jesus Christ has canceled and conquered hell. But the Bible does declare that there will be a one world currency, a one world government, a one world religious ruler. There will be a beast system that arises out of the sea and is divided into 10 quadrants, if you will, across the globe. And these 10 regions or these 10 governmental powers will rise up under the rule of one named the Antichrist. The Antichrist rule and reign, his, his only intent is to destroy Israel. Israel on the map in the world is one of the smallest nations surrounded by opposition. It would be similar to Kansas in the middle of the United States, surrounded by every other state in America that is out to kill and destroy, and, and they have defended themselves ever since their establishment in 1945. Israel is where Jesus Christ himself will return on a white horse with the angel armies and the armies of heaven behind him, and he will destroy the world, the world or the global army under the rule of the Antichrist that will come against him. Jesus Christ will destroy him, Revelation 19, with the sword of his mouth. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus Christ will then set up a physical temple and rule the world from the locale of Israel for a thousand years called the millennial reign. This is not fairy tale. This is not sci-fi. This is reality. Now, in preparation to that, when we talk about the mark of the beast, when we talk about as believers, hey, the mark of the beast is coming. And I know there's a lot of skepticism and there's a lot of stuff out there from the vaccines to microchips uh, to, to tracking devices that are, that are put inside of us or this and that. And I'm not here to debate or discuss that, but I do want us to be aware of what the Antichrist is trying to do. When we believers say, well, I will never take the mark of the beast. I will never deny my Lord. Scripture will say that that will be the toughest fight of your life. Can I get an amen? amen. Scripture will say that if you're not prepared to take a stand for Christ, then just as Peter, pre-cross, stood before the 12 disciples after three and a half years of tutelage under Jesus Christ himself, says, I will never deny you. And Jesus Christ says, oh, yes, you will. No, I won't. Yeah, Peter, you're going to deny me. No, I won't. I'll fight to the death. Are you with me? And Jesus says in the famous statement, Peter, before the rooster crows once, you will have denied me three times. You will have denied me three times. You remember that? In our humanness, oh, I will never. I would never take the mark. Are, are you with me? Yes. <clears throat> In our pride, I would never. But when Jesus zeroes in and x-rays your heart, sees the soul, he may say, yeah, rich young ruler, I know you got it all together, but this one thing you lack. Hey, Cameron, I know you got it all together and you'll, you'll fight to the death for me, but this one thing you lack, this one thing Satan can use to exploit you and destroy you. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus warns us as believers about a seven-step process that will lead modern-day Christians to take in the mark of the beast. 
Jesus warns us with the seven-step process of modern Christians, 2021, that will succumb to sin and the allure and the seduction of the enemy. That seven-step process is in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. If there are two chapters of your Bible that you need to read, it is, let me back up. If there are three chapters in your Bible that you need to read, it needs to be Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3. In chapter 2 and 3, we learn about the seven churches in Revelation. And Jesus Christ addresses seven different groups, different cities, different people groups. So he talks to the church of Ephesus, the church of, uh, um, of Pergamos, the church of Philadelphia, the church of Laodicea, the church of Thyatira. He talks to these different people groups. It would be no different than if Jesus Christ wrote a letter to the church in Austin. He's not writing one little group of people. He's, not write, he's writing to a conglomerate of people that are struggling with something that he knows will prevent them from loving him, prevent them from following him, lead them into a life of religion, lead them into a life of tradition, but they will deny the power of the Holy Ghost. And he writes these seven churches saying, hey, ch seven churches, hey, believers, hey, Cameron, put your name in there. Hey, Stacy, I know that you love me. I know that you're worshiping me. I know that you're doing more for me th today than you did yesterday. I know that you're doing this, but this one thing I have against you, you lost your first love. Hey, husband of 30 years, wife of 30 years, I know that you're earning plenty of money and you don't fight like you used to, and I know you're doing more for your spouse than you ever have, but, but there's something missing in your marriage. You just forgot how to write a love letter. You just forgot to bring home flowers. You just, I'm sorry, baby. You just forgot to go out on a date. Are, are you with me? I lost, listen, Jesus Christ wrote Revelation chapter 2 and 3. John purely dictated it. Chapters 2 and 3 are the seven churches, which are seven conditions or potential conditions of your heart. If we took our heart and we divided it into seven, there's probably, I'm going to just take out the word probably, there's a part of my heart that lost its love for God. There's a part of my heart that says, you know what? I deserve some me time, so I'm just going to do what I want to do. I've, I put plenty of money in the plate. I know God wants me to fund that orphanage in Mexico, but I deserve a new card. You know, so I, I lost. Are you, are you with me? There's a part of my heart that's lukewarm. Ah, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's just the way it is. Yeah, we just abort babies. It's just the way it is. I mean, it's just America. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. Oh, yeah, human trafficking. Yeah, oh man, it's horrible. It's bad. Honey, what's for dinner? Are, are you with me? Yeah. See, there's a part of my... So when Jesus is talking to these seven churches, he's saying this. If you're going to take the mark, which is going to come in 10 more chapters, whenever you get to the, to the, to the, uh, the, the hail storms and the, and, the, and the water turning to blood and you start to go through these tribulations, listen, if your heart's cold for me, during that tribulation, you're going to fall. Hey, listen, if your heart is lukewarm for me, then, then when this seventh seal is opened up, man, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to succumb to the beast system. See, because if you remember, if you read forward, the mark of the beast, many will take the mark of the beast simply because they won't be able to buy or sell because they're consumed with material. They're consumed with the idea that, hey, the mark of the beast, I can't let my kids starve. I'll just take the mark of the beast. Jesus says this, these seven churches, chapters two and three, your heart, if you don't address this issue in chapters two and three, and you don't see the courtroom of heaven, chapter four and five, and you don't see when the, when the, when the four horsemen come crum, coming across the earth and pestilence is everywhere, you're going to worry. Pestilence is everywhere. COVID, you, you're going to, are you with me? Pestilence means disease. Pestilence means sickness. Pestilence. When pestilence comes, when the death horse comes, when war comes, when, when choices have to be made, if you don't get your heart right, then you'll take the mark. Amen. Well, preacher, that's not very encouraging. Listen, the word of God should shake you to the core, not lull you to sleep. Amen. Amen. The church is lulled to sleep. Amen. It's our heart. Say my heart. 
Turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. I want to talk about not eating at Jezebel's table. Chapter, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. To the angel, that means pastor, leader, deacon, Sunday school teacher, door greeter, to the, to the member, listen, to the people of the church of Thyatira. Oh, it's not me. That's that church down the street. No, it's, it's somewhere in your heart. Are you with me? Do not read this chapter and point to somebody else. I do not give you permission to thou think of somebody else. Are you with me? Because if you do that, you're just deceiving yourself. James says you look in the mirror, you forget how you really look. You walk away and you say, man, I look good. But man, you didn't even shave, brush your teeth. You don't even have deodorant on. No wonder she don't want to get close to you. Are, are you with me? I don't know where that came from. Okay, 2, 18. And the church of the angel of Thyatira, to the angel of the church of Thyatira, these things says the son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire. If Jesus looks at you, he will consume you, and the only thing left will be that which is holy. His feet, Mike Corbin, are like fine brass, Hey, Cameron, I know your works. I know your love. Man, I know your service, your faith, your patience. And Cameron, as far as your works, man, you're doing more now than you have ever done for me. Whitestone, you're doing more. You got more missionaries than you ever had. Listen, you're doing, whoa, man. 20. Nevertheless, now, now this isn't Jesus nitpicking this isn't, oh, can't please Jesus. He's always got to have something else for me to do. This is, hey, listen, if, if you don't get this right, I mean, you're going to lose it all. Husband, if, if, if you don't stop looking at those images on the screen and lusting after them, you're going to lose everything. Wife, if you don't stop talking to that guy and getting close to him at work because he's such an emotional guy, he can understand. If you don't sever that, you're going to destroy what you got. Nevertheless, Whitestone Church, nevertheless, Cameron, I have this against you. You allow, say allow, you tolerate that woman. Now, this isn't a lady per se. So men, do not say, I can't deal with this. I don't struggle with this because I'm not a lady. This is a spirit. We're fixing to go into the demonic realm. The demonic beings are gender neutral. They're not a, a lady demon or a male demon. They're demons that possess people. The reason we use the word her and we use the name Jezebel is because we go back into Kings where Jezebel, the real lady, was. And this is the spirit that operated in her. So, so separate that. But hear what I have to say. Hear what the word of God has to say. Cameron, you allow... That Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, highlight it, underline it, to teach and beguile you. They say, I love to say teach and beguile other people. Cameron, you love to allow that spirit to teach and beguile you, trick you, deceive you, scheme you, get you off just a hair. She teaches my servants, believers, say believers, to commit what? Sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Are you with me? And I gave her time to repent of her immorality and she did not. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her. Well, hey man, I'm faithful. I'm not committing adultery. Okay, well, good for you. But like Hosea and the nation of Israel, are you committing spiritual adultery? Well, pastor, you know, I'm just emotionally attacked. I got an emotional... Uh, 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 Stay with me. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Unless they, say they. they. Unless Cameron, put your name there if you're bold enough. Unless you will repent 
of your deed. I, I, I ain't got nothing to say I'm sorry for. I'm not repenting until they repent. I'm not the one that did that. Pfft, never talking to them again. You got to repent. Are you, are you with me? I will kill her children with death and with the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Turn with me to your Old Testament. <clears throat> Say amen. amen. Turn with me to 2 Kings. We're going to camp out here over the next couple weeks. And I want to read to you about prophets in the kingdom of Israel. And I want to set the stage because we don't have time to read chapters of scripture. Israel, the nation, the nation that God formed, the nation of Abraham, the father, who then has a son named Isaac, who then is offered up as a sacrifice and God rescues and says, now I will sacrifice my son someday on this exact mountain, Richard Brown. That God who then has a son named Jacob and then has 12 sons that now form the nation of Israel. And God says, this is my nation. This nation, years later, is under the rule and reign of an evil king, a Hebrew Jewish king who is supposed to represent God, supposed to enforce the law of God. His name is Ahab and King Ahab is ruler over Israel. And King Ahab one day in his lust and his perversion and his greed and his lack of humility and in his arrogance towards God basically gives God the middle finger. He marries a pagan king's daughter. He makes an agreement with the neighboring nation. Hey, listen, we won't invade you. You don't invade us. Hey, I'll marry your daughter so that you won't invade me and I won't invade you. Are you with me? So he takes by his choice a young lady named Jezebel. Now, I want you to write down some characteristics over the next few weeks. But there are some characteristics of Jezebel that we have to keep cognizant in our mind so that we can be aware of that, hey, listen, if I have some of these same patterns, if I have some of these same characteristics, if I have some of these same uh, circumstances in my life, then I, then I personally may be subject to operating like Jezebel. Are, are you with me? Jezebel is sold. She's a trade. She's a piece of, of meat. She's a bargaining chip between two men who are not following God. Jezebel does not want to marry old, ugly Ahab. She doesn't want to leave her country that worships Baal. They worship Asherah. They are a pagan nation. The last thing she wants to do is be her dad's little bargaining chip and be shipped off to another king. She has to sleep with this guy. She has to learn his language. She has to be with these Jews, these Israelites. Who's Jehovah? Who's El Elyon? Who is God? Where is my Baal? Where is my Asherah? That is a picture of you and I's life when Jesus saved us. We're over here operating in our own little kingdom, our own little sin pattern, and God pulls us out into his world. Are you with me? Now, Jezebel, when she gets to the kingdom, Ahab, the man, the leader, the ruler, the king, succumbs to her perversion and starts to eat from her table. He starts to dine on her delicacies. Those delicacies are sexual perversion and demonology, not Yahweh scripture, but the mandate of hell and the, and the rule of Satan's laws and kingdom. Are you with me? Over time, Jezebel, as she starts to operate as queen, under the authority of the king, she slowly gets the king to subject or uh, succumb his kingdom and his position, and she becomes the ruler. Are you with me? Now look at verse 20. We're going to zero in on this verse. 
I just want us to see kind of how we got there. 1 Kings 18, verse 19. Let me, let me set the stage one more time before we read this. I'm sorry. So underneath this evil king and this ruler, Jezebel starts to erect temples, altars, statues to foreign gods, predominantly Baal, who is later known as Zeus to the Greeks, who's later known as Jupiter, uh, who's later known as Thor. Oh, that's just a Marvel movie. No, 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 no. That's the god Baal just under a new name. But let's have our Thor hammers and entertain the kids. Are you with me? This Baal worship, she starts to erect temples and altars to Baal in holy land. Remember the promised land. Remember the land that God gave his Jews. Remember the God that pulled them out of Egypt. Now in his temple, in his land, in his house, the queen has erected false God altars. Are you with me? Look at, listen to this. This is, we're going to fast forward just a little bit. Elijah is calling the nation to choose whom they're going to serve. He's about to slaughter a bull. He's about to call down fire from heaven. God's about to consume the altar. 1 Kings 18, 19. Now, therefore, send and gather all of Israel to me on Mount Carmel. And hey, by the way, don't just bring Israel. Bring the 450 prophets of Baal. Say 450 prophets of Baal. And also bring the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Now I want you to picture a prophet. I want you to picture a preacher. I want you to picture a missionary. I want you to picture a Sunday school teacher. I want you to picture a, a musician, a worship leader. I want you to picture good Christians in the church and in America today. Are you with me? I want you to picture sons and daughters. I want you to picture young men and old men, young women and old women. I want you to picture the church as a whole. Now, when it says 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah sat at Jezebel's table. Who are these prophets of Baal? Who are these prophets of Asherah? These are 850 Jewish men. These are Israelites. These aren't pagan guys from another nation that came on in and said, hey, we're going to now. No, no. These were Jewish men and women. These were God's people. These are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are from the 12 tribes. These men and women were all birthed to be worshipers of God, prophets of God, missionaries of God, healers of God, lawyers for the Lord, teachers for the Lord. They were just like you and I. But somewhere in their journey, they quit kneeling to Yahweh and they started to sit and say, you know what? Man, Jezebel's delicacies, delicacies man, they're pretty good. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a bite. Mmm. You know, this movie's not that bad. Yeah, I know. It's about a ship that sunk back in 1920, and they said nobody could sink it. It's like the biggest boat ever. I know, yeah, yeah there's a really bad nude scene in it. But dang, it is a good movie. Yeah. Nah. Man, this is good stuff. Yeah, that preacher doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't, I don't really need to go to church to worship God. Uh, I don't need people to worship God. No. You know, I don't really need to read my Bible. That's good. Man, I'm, I'm going to sit at Jezebel's table. See, the trap of Jezebel is seduction. So you could write down characteristic seduction. Now, too many times we run off to prostitutes and, and sexually people who you, and they do operate in a Jezebel spirit. 
But the seduction of the enemy has crept into the church to say, you know, I don't really need to spend any time in prayer. God loves me anyways. I don't really need to develop a prayer life. I don't, you know what? I'm just going to read that one little verse that, that Dennis sends out a day. I'm just going to read that. Man, I'm so glad Dennis got up and prayed and Dennis fasted and Dennis talked. And man, I'm going to read what God gave Dennis. Woo! I love you, Dennis. I'm just picking on you right now. But, but we, we, we've chalked up the, the walk with the Lord to, let me just read one little verse on my way to work. Well, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, how's my stocks doing? Hey, hey, Susie, what's going on? Yeah, don't let my wife know I'm talking to you. Hey, Billy, what's going on, man? You got any money? In, you know. And we're being seduced. We're succumbing to sexual perversion in the church. We're succumbing to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes. We're succumbing. Ooh, that is a nice house, man. Dude, one day, baby, we're going to live up there. Yeah, God wants to bless us. I mean, he really wants to bless us. And, and the blessings of God is that new mansion. Whew. Yeah, sucks for those kids over there at the orphanage, but, man, God loves me. So, so we're sitting at the table of a spirit. We're eating the delicacies of hell's kitchen. We're drinking. You know, man, I just need to escape. I'm just going to, I'm just going to drink a little bit. Man, the Bible's good with drinking. I can drink all the way. You know, I'm just going to socialize. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to smoke a little bit of this. I'm gonna tell, yeah, I know the prescription says three, but I'm taking six, man. I just need, I just need, you know, I just, it's been a tough week, man. So I'm just gonna, I just, I deserve. Now listen, 850 Jewish men quit worshiping Yahweh and found themselves at Jezebel's table bowing down to the God of the pagans. See, when Jezebel moves in, Jezebel, the word literally means without cohabitation. A Jezebel spirit, you need to write these characteristics down. We're going to talk about them over the next few weeks. A Jezebel spirit hates authority. In a marriage, it sounds like this. She wears the pants in the family. That's because the male has done one or two things. The male has been a tyrant, dictator, or he's been like milk toast. He's been a wimp. Yes? And so therefore, the lady is now taking on a position or a responsibility she doesn't really want, but finds herself having to rule and reign in the kingdom. Are you with me? Jezebel's spirit operates in men. Many musicians struggle with it more. It's in our psyche. It's just in the way that we're built. Different spirits have different inroads easily to different types of people. But a Jezebel spirit in a male will operate in control and manipulation dominance. We'll call it pride, but it will be dominating, manipulating. It'll be, it'll be skirting the real issue and working behind the scenes. Are you with me? God has called the church. We'll pick up on that next week. God has called the church to an Elijah spirit. So stand up with me and let's talk about an Elijah spirit for a minute. I want to go to an unlikely, uh, an unlikely character to talk about an Elijah spirit. Say Elijah. Elijah. In Judges, forgetting my verse real quick. Judges 6, thank you. Judges chapter 6, verse 25. 
Listen to this. Remember a guy named Gideon? Gideon is in the Israelites camp. He's in his city. And his father and the city townsmen have erected a statue to Baal. And they've erected a statue to Asherah. A quick summation, Baal worship was the worship of a God that would supply rain, supply money, supply sustenance, be our provider. Baal, our provider. Asherah was a pole. We call it a maypole. We have different, uh, we have one uh, Washington Monument in D.C. They're all over the, the world in different major cities. These Asherah poles represent fertility, sexuality, perversion. So we dance around them and we, we, like puppets, have no idea what we're doing. These two statues are erected in the city of God. And this young man who is not known to be bold, who is not known to be a warrior, a leader, a fighter, his name is Gideon. And God works a course through his life to lead him to be one of the most powerful warriors, men of valor in the scripture. And God knocks on Gideon's heart and he says, hey, Gideon, go tear down those altars. Go destroy that which has been erected to a foreign God and reestablish, readjust, reset your city. It says this, Judges 6. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Gideon, take your father's young bull, the second bull is seven years old, tear down, say that with me, tear down the altar to Baal that your father has. It's huge when we talk about generational sin being passed down. And cut down the wooden image, which is the Asherah pole, or the grove, that is next to it. This is what I want us to think about this week as you read through Revelation chapter 2 and 3, 1, 2, and 3. And I've been asking the Lord, Lord, where am I sitting at the Jezebel table? Where, have I, where has Cameron, Pastor Cameron, Pastor Cameron, White, where have I been sitting at the table of Jezebel? Yeah, it's just some dirty jokes. It's not that bad. It's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, I don't really know if God is my sole provider. I think I'd better have a 401k that's fully funded. You know, if I just had a million dollars in the bank, I'd be good. I mean, then I would serve God the rest of my life. Russell, man, I'd go to, I'd go to Africa if I just, if I just had that bail provider security. You know, my wife, she just doesn't talk to me like she used to. This is completely made up right now. She just doesn't dress for me anymore. There are two idols that have been erected in the United States of America. There are two altars that have been erected on God's land. One is an altar to Baal that money, material, job, education, degree is my provider and security. Lust for things, people just need a little bit more. And God is asking, will you go and cut those down. Cameron, do you have enough courage to cancel that subscription to that television provider that is bringing nothing holy into your house? Is, it, is, it, is that that hard? Hey, Cameron, I know that you can't get off of those websites on your smartphone. Would you throw that away for a dumb phone? 
hey, hey, Cameron, I know that you think you need this, this, and this to be secure. But have I not taught you over the last 10 months that just this little thing called COVID could take that away from you and destroy that? And now what are you going to put your hope in? The next thing that, the, oh, the bar of gold. Yeah, if I could just get a bar of gold. There's two idols. There's two altars. There's two major statues. And God is calling the church, not the unbeliever. He is not talking to Hollywood. He's not talking to the unbeliever. He's not talking to Nashville. He's not talking to Washington. He's talking to Whitestone Church. February the 7th, 2021, right here, right now, saying, would you tear down that idol? So, Father God, would you reveal to us how we've been eating from the seductress's table? God, would you reveal to us the corruption and the filth in our mindsets, in our hearts. God, would you give us the boldness of Gideon? The boldness of Elijah to call it like it is. The boldness to change a nation. So if that's you this morning, you pray out loud to you and your God. God, forgive me. God, I repent. Listen, a Jezebel spirit will not repent. It will call others to repentance. You don't counsel a demon. You cast out a demon. You kick it out. You confess it. God, I confess. Come on, ally. You and God, I confess my perversion. God, I confess my fantasies. God, I confess my secret life. God, I confess my addiction. God, I confess my worship of false gods. I confess my sin. God, I confess my sin. Would you take, God, I give it to you. You've taken it. Now, God, uproot the witchcraft, the rebellion, Listen, if you're rebelling, let, yo, I'm going I'm to teach my boss a thing or two. You're not the boss. You're, the, you're, you're under the boss, so you don't teach the, the te- Jezebel wants to teach the teacher. You struggle with the Jezebel spirit if you think that you can teach your boss something. Oh, I'm going to teach that. You know, my preacher, he just don't understand Greek and Hebrew. I'm going to go teach him something. That is a Jezebel spirit. Uh, my husband, he don't know the Bible like I do. I'm, I'm the spiritual leader. Yeah, he's the leader. He's the, I'm the spiritual leader. I'm, no, no, no. You're, listen, there is, a, there is an order. Father God, forgive me for wanting to teach the teacher. Forgive me for not being able to be a student. God, teach me. Teach me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, Jesus' name.